What's up guys, Adrian from AC Designs Garage and today we're going to try out what I think is the best budget under $1,000 TIG machine with AC, DC and pulse. It's the Arc Captain 200P. We're fit to get right into it, so here we go. Alright guys, before we get started on this video and setting this Arc Captain up, I was just going to tell you there's a link, affiliate link in the description below. Uh, if you go check out one of these machines and buy one, it helps the channel out. It don't cost any extra to y'all. I think you save a little bit too. So I dropped a code in the description below and go scoop you one of these units up. You won't be disappointed. All right, guys, here she is. The Arc Captain TIG 200P ACDC machine plus pulse. The cool thing about the AC part, if you guys don't know, the alternating part is you can do aluminum. And that's a really cool feature. Plus the pulse with aluminum, you can do super thin aluminum and sheet metal because if you guys watch my channel, you know I build cars and stuff. So we do exhaust systems, framework, rush repair, all that good stuff. So the, the pulse and stuff will come in real handy with it. And on this table, here's what come with the box. I know you guys probably don't like to watch unboxings. You, you guys know how to open a box. There's the box. There's the stuff. We're unboxed. All right, so here's your gas hose for your argon. Super cool feature. Don't have the old barb fittings that leak like crazy. Stuff costs too much to blow out in the air. It already got crimp fittings. That's nice. It's got your ground with your dens. I think that's what you say, den style. Quick connects. Work really good. It's got a pretty heavy ground to it. It's got good copper and stuff on it. I think she'll work good. Uh, the TIG torch comes with a good universal WP26 which is a good heavy duty torch. It comes with the switch, which is really cool. Instead of having to do lift arc, I just don't like it. Anytime you touch your tungsten down, I just don't think it works that good. But hey, if you got it, that's all you got, that's what you gotta use. Comes with a good, like a rubber or vinyl or something on it. It's got the den style quick connect on it. It's got your gas line hookup. It's all in this good sleeve. Comes with one of these little chipper brushes if you're using the stick welding whip here it's got the same den style connector here's your 110 to 220 adapter kit i think this thing's good for i usually run everything on 220 but i think this thing's good on the 110 side up to like 140 amps which is pretty good if you don't have 220. also it comes with a bag of consumables the button back cover things for the tongues where you call them collet bodies i think it goes uh 1 332 and 1 8 on the collet bodies it's got like a four five and six comes with it and it also comes with some 1 16th tungsten ain't that crazy i've never seen anybody send tungsten with it it also comes with a pretty high quality gas regulator and stuff i was needing one because the one i got's old and it's leaking so that's pretty cool the only thing that it don't come with, and you can order from them extra, is the foot pedal. I suggest doing the foot pedals. I love the foot pedals. Even if you get one of their machines that don't have pulse, if you got a foot pedal, you can foot pulse it. I like this feature because it's, for you that don't know about the foot pedals, it's just the switch. It's like a gas pedal, basically. You want to go faster, you push it down. If you want more heat, you push it down. So what you do is you put it on your max amperage that you want when you dial it in on your machine. You put it, say you want... 150 amps you crank her up to buck 50 on there and then when that thing's floored it's at 150 and if it's all the way off it's at zero so you got that range in between there if you start burning through or puddle starts to get a little too wide you can back off a little bit there just makes life a whole lot easier so i suggest going with the foot pedal we're gonna get this unit here stuck together i'm gonna video real quick of putting it together and stuff and the only bottle I got is the one on my other machine, so we're going to just, that's why I got my other machine backed over here. We're just going to tie it together, and we're going to, I got some sample stuff. We're going to, we'll clean these up. We're going to do some exhaust pipe, and this is some stuff I done the other day. Sorry, we well to guess. So we'll just clean this up and do the backside, because metal ain't cheap. But I want to give you some different situations of welding and uh, test this unit out. So let's get to putting it together. That put on there and remember don't put any lube or anything like that on your uh on your threads or any thread sealant or anything like that so you don't want to hog this this is brass you just want to bump it real good where it's going to seat that should be good get our 
gas hose here. Other one out of the way. Same thing on these. I don't like to put Teflon or anything on these. Now what you can do is after we get these hooked up, you can come back with some soapy water and just uh, spray it to see if it's bubbling. But these usually are pretty good about not leaking. right there we'll take this in here screw this into the back of the machine and we'll be done on the back side of the machine the cool thing about this coming with tungsten and everything this thing comes almost ready to weld get you a bottle of gas like I said you don't need to torque it too much That's it back here. All right, guys, when you set setting your TIG machine up, your ground's going to go on the positive side. It's a TIG ground DC electrode negative, with your electrode being your TIG torch. So your ground will go on the positive side. So with these cool little dents, I think I'm saying it right, you just put them in there and give them a little turn like that. That's done. Go over here and get your TIG torch. And you just take your little quick connect, put that to the negative side, and this around here, hook your gas up. Actually, make a little more room, I'm just pull the ground out. Just be careful with that, don't over torque it. Ground back in, ground's on positive, electrodes on negative, and then this thing has this trick little, you know, a lot of these you put in there and try to line up, try to screw them in. This thing's got a quick connect, kind of like an air fitting. So what you do, it can only go one way because it's got a little uh, slot right here. I don't know if you can see it or not. All right, little tangs at the top. So. Get that lined up. Check it out. Just grab that thing right here. Boop. Just pops off and you just line her back up. That's pretty trick. I do like that. So this unit is basically hooked up, ready to go. We just got to throw some juice to her. Let's take the cord down here. Hook into my big drop cord thingy. All right, guys, now that's how you uh, set up for the switch. I was about to mess up, but I'm going to show you if I mess up. This is for the trigger on the TIG torch. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to take this uh, little bread tie that come with it, and I'm just going to roll this because we're not going to use the switch on the thing because we got a pedal. But if you're using the switch, you just plug that in like that. But the pedal actually has the same setup. back out so y'all can see see the pedal has the same setup so I'm gonna set the pedal on the floor and it just plugs right into that spot there pretty cool the pedal looks like it has like maybe a 10 foot cord or something on it let's see yeah it's got the same one well, look it's got the little notch for the top and to use the pedal boom it's done and one cool thing about this thing that that i read about on it it has a fan on demand so when you cut this unit on the fan will run a little bit and it'll cut off and until it gets needing to cool this thing's gonna run quiet where all my other machines you just got that roar of the fan especially when i'm filming and stuff it just it's hard to hear like now sorry if y'all hear any rain i'm in a metal building and it's pouring rain but this has a fan on demand. It kicks on when it needs it, cuts off when it don't. So that's one less thing you got to listen to. All right, now that we got everything hooked up before we turn it on set stuff up, we're going to go ahead and put the torch together real quick. And uh, 
I already have a sharpened 330 second. That's what I use to run. It comes with the 116th, and I'll use that on some thinner stuff. But around 8th inch and stuff up, I like to use this. I'm going to use the biggest cup we got in here, which is the number 6. Usually on your CFH, when you set your CFH up, cubic feet per hour, is if you have a number 6, you want to do it about, your uh, gas rate will be about 2.5 times roughly. So at number six, if you double that, it'd be 12 CFH. I'd probably go 18 or so CFH. It's just the way I do stuff. Man, I hadn't used these these big units in a while. Let's see. This is a I guess I can't see this little writing. I'm getting old. It's a 332. I think that's 2.4 millimeter in the metric stuff. I don't do metric, so I don't know. Easy way to tell is to slip this in here. And uh, it fits. It's basically, what it does is, see, these have splits in them. And this is inside the TIG torch. And when you slide this in from the back, it pushes it down and tightens up on this. So. All right, let's start putting this unit together. Just take this, put it in here. It's got knurls on it, but I never tighten this stuff up real tight. I like to, sometimes you can put your little something, I hand tight's usually good. You just don't want to over tighten this stuff, especially with this. When you put the back cap and stuff on, you really don't want to just cram it in there because you want it to be adjustable. Now this is a pretty stubby piece of tungsten, but all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let it fall in there like that. And we're gonna put our cup on. And just do that hand tight. And then you can just uh, take that. It's almost, almost too short. Get in there and push it out. I'm gonna give me about that much stick out. If you can see that. That's, I got it roughly about three eighths of an inch. That'll be good. I'm used to running them big gas lens where you can stick them on out. And that's like I said, we'll, we'll hot rod that thing later and uh, do that. but. We're going to pick our, our back cap, and if you're running a full piece of tungsten, you need to run a long one, but since I'm running a little stubby one, I try to make these torch heads as small as possible. So you just take that and line that thing up right there with that. See, your tungsten won't move, and you should be able to loosen it a little bit, and see, I can adjust it like that, so... Get it back out here. These short ones are harder to do. Back out here about where we want it, roughly. If you get it out too far, you're going to lose shield gas, and you don't want this to get contaminated. See how it's loose right there? Like I said, don't. Just snug it. She's tight now, so she's ready to go. I'm going to probably clip these off because I'm not going to use this right now. It's just some zip tie, so I'm going to clip this off and sandwich tight down here and uh, be ready to do a little dipping, dipping, dipping in it. So, get that done real quick. I just, you really don't have to do this, but I don't want it in my way. We got more zip ties we can. And I'll just leave a, a good loop and just do that. Just tie that back up down here out of the way. You could take it out if you wanted to, but I'm not. I'm just going to leave it. All right, we're going to try not to put this uh, cord in a bind here. We're just going to go around here. If we ever need to use it, we can just uh, put it back on. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just... I like the foot pedal better and I'm used to it. And you can adjust your amperage on the foot pedal, so. I right, got a little wiggly room there. Clip these off good and flush. So that's done right there, out of the way. We come like this, we'll be able to just tig, tig, run down through here, just dip, 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 so.
All right, guys, quick little commercial for me. I guess I sponsored this video. Is uh, the new merch we finally got done. Guys, there's a super limited number of these things. I've got like 95 of these shirts in uh, various sizes. As of right now, we don't ship internationally, but eventually I hope to be able to. But I'm going to get this spun around to where you can soak in all this gorgeous merchandise. All right, guys, here's the front of it. It's got my new, uh, newly designed logo in, in the center. It's yeah, it's probably about six inches big in the center, right in the middle of the shirt. And the back is the piece de resistance. The back I had Ryan Ford out of Australia design it after my dad's 32 and he did a killer job. So we're gonna get her flipped over. Here it is guys. This is kind of what I think about the whole electric car movement in the hot rods. You know, I don't think they belong in hot rods. So this is what I think about it. If you want to scoop you up one of these super cool rad 80s design, Death Before Electric, you can only get it here at acdesignsgarage.com. Go scoop you one up before they're gone. Now back to our regular scheduled program. All right, guys, we're going to cut this unit on this by flipping the switch back here. Fan will come on run for a few seconds, then it'll cut off, and uh, we're going to set this thing up. All right, the fan just kicked off. I'm going to go over this real quick. Probably not going to go into detail on the pulse because I don't really know enough about it to give you any detail. I can give you the... The basics of it, that's about it. But we may do another video really dedicated to pulse and the use of it later on. But starting up here, we'll start at the very top. You got your AC TIG. So this will be your AC side to do your aluminum and stuff like that. Then you got DC TIG. Then you got MMA, which is your stick welding. But I don't use that over here. It's your MMA settings and stuff. And this is how you turn your values up and down. So we're going to go... DC TIG, it's got 2T and 4T, and what you heard that beep was after it sets for a little bit and you change something, it automatically locks it in. So to go move this stuff, I'll show you here. Your 2T will be like your pedal or your switch on your uh, torch head. The 2T, you'll hold your button or the pedal down till you get done and let off it stops. The 4T, you tap it, it gets going, and you can weld until you tap it again, but See, it goes 2T, 4T. Then it has a pretty neat spot feature. Say you're doing some little stainless panels if you're overlapping or something like that. You just uh, you can set the timing on how long it spots and all that. But we're going to focus on the 2T DC TIG. We're cutting the pulse off. I'm going to show you guys how to pulse with your foot too because I do that on my other welder. It has uh, the pulse feature. But once I learn this more, I'll be better. And pretty much this... Uh, little IP, whatever it is right there, that's your main amperage. You just turn that up and down, cause like I'm gonna be on, I got some eighth inch plate here we're gonna just be playing with. So we're gonna set it on 130 amps, so that's your, your main amperage. And you can come in here, you blink it like that, then you can, when it's blinking, you down here on your pre-flow, half second on your pre-flow for your argon. See if you want me to get a hand out of the way. Okay, that's beeping, and you turn down here, that's your pre-flow, half a second, then that goes up to your main amperage, and down here your post-flow. I'm going to, once it gets to the post, if you want to change that, you just hit that button. I'm going to do about, let's just do four seconds. On stainless or something, you're going to want more, and you just hit that again, so that should be our settings. We'll go back through them one more time. Hit this button, pre-flow half a second, our amperage is buck 30 at the highest, and then our post-flow is 4 seconds. Let's see, I'm under, <laughs> this is not the right way to do it. On this post-flow, we're going to take her down about 2.5, just because I am about out of gas. This is not, I'd at least do 4 or 5 seconds, just rule of thumb guys. At least four or five seconds on your post flow so it keeps it shielded but i'm down to like 200 pounds on gas right now so we're pushing it i didn't know i was that low right now i'm probably gonna do uh like a butt joint I'm gonna put these two pieces gear like i said these is all uh eight inch just regular old mild steel plate probably gonna do a t-joint on this one maybe a lap joint then this one here we'll see what we'll do i did get us some uh two and a half inch mild steel tubing 
We might play with the pulse. I'm not gonna give you any pulse settings because I really am not that familiar with it. I'm gonna keep playing with it. We'll do update videos later on and stuff, but this is what I made my exhaust out of, two and a half inch mild steel. We might play with the pulse and uh, just do like a fusion weld if we got it tight enough. It's, I don't know, there's a little gap. You don't need much gap to blow through, but yeah, let's get at it. Sorry for the noise, guys. It's pouring down rain outside on a tin roof, but I'll try to speak up. What I'm running for filler rod is a 1 16th. I think this is an ER70 S-2. And I run 100% argon at about 20 CFH. And 332nd red tungsten. And I think that's about everything. So I'm going to go over here and get my gas set. I'll show you that real quick. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack this bow. I always crack the bow real easy. Don't just hammer it, because you can bust these things. See, I'm down to not a whole lot. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna machine zone. I'm just gonna, you'll watch it, that's carbon dioxide. Argon's on this back side. I don't know how good you can see it. What you'll do is you'll turn this knob down or up for it. I'm just gonna bump the pedal. right at 20 right there let her drop all right she's ready I just I just set my pedal up here on the table all right guys I want to show you one thing on here that uh can you see this mill scale up here I've ground the ground this stuff's hard as a rock I mean it just but you want to get this stuff off you'll get a lot better welds on here if you'll get her good and shiny because if you go over this stuff, it'll spit and sputter. So clean it good, get this off. They have something called P&O, pickled in oil. They don't have, see, here's the mill scale. Just don't think you can weld straight through that. You can, but it just don't do it good, especially with TIG welding. So just want to show you that real quick. We're going to run a couple. I'm just going to try my heat passes on this. Got another one. And uh, let's do our initial welds here and see how she does. All right, guys, here we go. First arc here. Try her out. 130 DC TIG. Pretty impressive, super weird that it's uh, quiet. I'm not used to that. It started out cold and uh, it's not looking bad. Let's uh, do a couple more runs on it, try her out. I'm pulsing it right now with the pedal. Let's see how it does. All right, she's looking pretty good. Let's uh, I'm gonna cut down on the heat a little bit. Go down to 125. I'll get y'all in a little closer. All right, we're gonna do a lap weld. I'm gonna get a couple of tacks here and uh. Start welding her. Pretty impressed though. It's kind of weird though not hearing it run. Get a couple tacks real quick. bad I've done a lot better i gotta get used to this little bit bigger torch i'm used to my smaller torch and the way this foot pedal works but it man, i'll tell you what it's not 
too shabby. My shield's acting up on it. I don't know if my battery's running dead or what. Flash me and I'm still seeing dots. It's getting a little better. A little more consistent. It's not the machine, it's me. Doing pretty good though. Seems to be this is some stuff from the other day I done with my other machine. That's doing pretty good. Let's uh do a T joint here. All right, guys, we're going to do the T-joint now, and I'm going to do a little pulsing with the foot and see if we can make this look good up in here. So here we go. Well, man, this helmet is having issues. Keeps flashing me for some reason. I'm gonna change helmets, I guess. Well, beautiful. It's pretty good, I think. Not a lot of high build up. Machine's working great. This stupid helmet's flashing me for some reason, so. Get this swapped out and we'll finish that weld up. Alright guys, helmet changed, so maybe I'll do better this time. Start off where we was at. Well, that time I could see. That don't work too shabby. All right, guys, there she is. You can see where I started back right here in the mill it built back up where I had a good roll going there for a minute and it just blinded me. And I couldn't get back in rhythm, but I tell you, this welder does good. Man, it's quiet. That's so cool. It's being quiet like that, but yeah it does pretty good no complaints so far i just the only hard part for me is these uh these 26 size torches i'm not used to i had not run like the 9 and 20 it's about half that size but i can just get used to it tell you what we're gonna do maybe i'm gonna go ahead and tell you now guys i don't have a clue on this pulse stuff i'm gonna go in here and uh flip this one over right here and uh, we're gonna throw a little pulse action on it. And uh, maybe if I can get one of my welding helmets uh, set up and not acting all goofy, I'll get you some mark shots real quick. All right, guys, let's go into some uncharted territory. All right, we're going to pulse. That's the pre-flow, we're gonna leave that same, 125. Let's, uh, let's go up to 130 on it. Then the down slope, we're going to jump her up to... Uh, I'll just leave that at that. We'll go... I'm thinking this is how long it takes between. It's like one second. We'll see. Hurts 50%. We'll do this at 45, because I've seen guys do it at 45. 
then the same on that. So we'll go over this real quick and don't <laughs> don't take my writing because I don't know what I'm doing. We're just rolling with it. All right, we got the pre-flow half a second, 130 for our main current. It'll be 65 on the the lowest. Sorry if it's taking me a while to explain it. I'm just learning it, I'm not faking it. 45%. So let's see what that does. Should be that one on the Hertz should be one pulse per second. We'll see what it does. First time. So guys, on this, I'm just gonna floor it because it's gonna do the 130. I'm not gonna pulse. This is not gonna be a pulse on the pedal or anything. Okay, we can see. And I'm probably not gonna use any filler. We'll see what it does. I may have to come back and stop and use filler again. But let's try it. I'm just gonna floor this unit and see what she does. Seems to be about one pulse per second. What does it look like? Yeah, it don't look that good because I got meal scale all over everything. But still on this side over here is clean. This is clean stuff. Let's take our. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and bump my mine up to about 150 on the main amperage. Y'all don't need to see that. I'm just gonna. Do, 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 do. We're gonna go up 150 amps on that. That's all I'm changing. Let's do it on some flat clean. How about that? Instead of let's do it right here and see. Y'all can see that good. There we go. Guys, I think I'm gonna like this pulse thing. Cause you just floor it and roll with it. Seems to be better now, actually. I need a longer post flow so it don't gray out. It's not keeping the oxides out good enough. But y'all see that one here? It's not too shabby for learning. Well, let's jump up here and uh, do another lap joint on it. And, I'm gonna call that good on the steel. Let me get a couple tacks on here. All right, now we're doing no filler. This is gonna be a, an autogenous weld. I don't know. It sounds close. Let's see what we can do on this. This is all pulse. There we go. y'all might have heard it I dipped it a couple times but she's looking pretty good get it up here where you can see it let you see the well kind of hard to see but it's laid in there pretty slick I think the pulse will maybe help some of you guys as getting new to it i may uh, on the other side add filler because it kind of gives you time it's like one of the little things they use in music with tick tock tick tock things so every time it it throws the the 150 you dip and it'll back off and it throws the 150 move forward and dip we'll do this and on this one real quick and i'm probably gonna say that's gonna be it on this uh on the metal part 
so far I'm digging it. I, I could probably tune in on these settings some, but I'm gonna try right. Actually, I may do a lay wire in here. Basically, let me show you that real quick. For beginners, it works good. What you just do is you basically just hold your wire right there at the front of it and just let it take off what it wants. And uh, we'll try that. I kind of like it, guys. It really is impressive. Makes me look a lot better than what I actually am. Kind of got out of rhythm there, but... What do y'all think of that? I mean, that's stacking some dimes right there. It's pretty good. Let's see if I can get my flashlight on it where you can see it a little better. I gotta get used to that pulse stuff. Yeah, let's try it on the tubing real quick and uh, on the exhaust tubing, we'll see what that does. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop down on my amperage a little bit. Yeah, I want. We're gonna go back down to about 130 on it. That's all we change. We're gonna stay with the pulse. I'm gonna try to get us a good tack. Right. All right, we got a good tack on her. I set it up like this and see how she does. Probably gonna blow a hole. Tell you guys, I wish I'd have had this when I was doing the exhaust. That makes life so much easier. Look at that. Shoo wee. Look in there, 100% penetration. Good gravy. Look at that. Mm. Yeah, this is going to be my go to. I'm going to go ahead and. Oops, sorry, you guys can sit. It's going to be my go to. So we on... I'm going to go on back around to this spot here and uh, call that. So this exhaust stuff, this is the way to go. little much. I think I could have turned it down some, uh, but you see the heat affected zone up here is a little smaller at the top. And it gets a little wider down here, but 100% penetration. You guys are doing exhaust? I mean, what an exhaust system costs now, you can buy one of these welders and do your own. Well, I did a little more practicing and getting used to this pulse thing. I haven't changed anything. We're on 150 and uh, one pulse per second. 
But check this out. It's probably one of my better welds I've ever done. It's not, I mean, not the greatest, but a little undercut on top. But man, I'm going to tell you what, guys, this machine, once I get this unit completely figured out, poor old Blue over here, she might be, might be getting dust on her, so. I did some more we're going to do on camera. I'm going to try to do some arc shots, but and you can't argue with the results here. I mean, eighth inch. Everything I do, like I said, I'm on low, low bolted or amperage right now. So, yeah, I'm gonna get in here and do a couple more coupons together. I might use some stainless filler wire where it makes it really look good. But yeah, let me get this stuff cleaned up real quick, and uh, we'll go back. I'm gonna leave the settings the same, and uh, we'll try to stack some more up on the lap joint. I like the lap joints or the T joints; they show up better. Your butt joints don't normally look as good, but we're just trying out different things. I've done, like I said we've done the butt joints and the lap joints and just the backside of some practice stuff, but yeah, let's get it cleaned up. All right, we got a couple little coupons cleaned up here. I'm going to do a, a little lap joint right there for you, and I'm going to try to get you an arc shot where y'all can see, because it's hard to really tell, just the blurry looking junk, but if I can get her set up good, we're going to try to get you an arc shot going. So. I'm gonna tell you what guys i'm super impressed with this machine so far man it's so crazy that the machine's on right now i mean every time i sit down to get ready to hit the foot pedal i'm like did i cut the machine on because the old miller over there she just she got a big old fan on her but this thing here is just crazy it's quiet you can hear everything when it's just even when it's pulsing and you can hear the the metal flow almost hear the metal flowing and melting out it's nuts people i tell you super impressed i don't think i when we do the hot rod, when what I'm planning on doing, I may try to find me a 9 or 20 style torch, which is half the size for what I do. Great torch. This one works good. Heavy duty. It's a good, you know, 200 amp torch or better. You, know, you can wear some high stuff. But I, I do more race car fabricating, hot rod fabricate type stuff. And so far, I mean, that exhaust tube impressed me because I spent hours on here welding V-band clamps and stuff on on this exhaust right here. I'll take you around here to show you. I mean, there, there's a weld on this side of the V-band and on this side and on the exhaust and all the way up through there on these things. And I mean, granted the welds look really good and stuff, but man, if I'd have had that pulse on here, whoo -wee, I think I could have cut my time in half and stuff. But I'm gonna probably get y'all a few more arc shots. I wanna get you, this hard to work around them so really don't pay too much attention to the welds because when you got a camera sitting in between you and the filler rod and you're trying to look over the camera through the shield stuff so they're not going to be optimal but i want to tell you they turn out pretty dead gone good but the old machine tell you what i am pretty dead gone impressed We've just been burning up a bunch of stuff. Just trying to get a feel for it and stuff, and we'll be able to tune stuff in more. Because right now, I, I had to pull this off, but these are my settings that I had. That's the pre-flow. That's the amperage on 8th inch. That's your hertz right there. One pulse per second, 45%, and three seconds on the post-flow. That's what my settings are right now. I'm doing this, but seems to be pretty good. I dig it, guys. I mean, this, like I said, I wasn't paid. They sent me this machine. 
asked me if I'd just do a review and, you know, give them the truth on it. And so far, I haven't found any any flaws to it unless, you know, like ergonomic stuff. Like for me, the I love the foot pedal. It's it's a good heavy foot pedal and it's got real good. I mean, you can feel it real good under you. Things got rubber on it. Don't slide around and stuff. Like I said, the only thing is this big torch that I just ain't used to it. It's just me. It's nothing wrong with it. So if I can change that out, put me like a number 10 or 12 gas lens on that mug, she'll be 100% A-okay. Guys, there's that little wash or weave or whatever you want to call it. I did. I threw in some stainless uh, filler just to make it look a little more colorful. Now, it's not good and consistent like it should be, but I'll show you what I shoot my arc shots with. I prop this helmet up. Let me get back here. I prop my helmet up and put my phone inside it. And uh, basically, when I'm welding, it looks like this. I have my arm around it like this and I have my TIG rig over there. But I'm just showing you the weaves. I, I wish I could figure out a, a easier way to, to make one of these arc shots for you. So you can really get in there and see. I figured out one of these days, but we got arc shields sitting there where we actually have one from Arc Captain we're gonna try out. I just hadn't had a chance to get it out and get some time under it, but they sent me one of these. Big shout out to them. Thanks to them for sending all this stuff out. I really appreciate it. and. The reason I like doing these more budget-friendly type, I mean, this thing here performs like, I don't know, I hadn't welded with anything any better than this right here so far, but they perform great, and for like guys that are getting started in their shop, that Miller, that's a Synchro Wave 250 right here I have. I've had it for 20 years. Synchro Wave 250 DX, it's, don't have pulse. You could have got pulse, but I didn't get it. Because the budget, that machine was like $4,500. Probably going to be my main machine for now for a while, especially after I get it dialed in. But I think what I'm going to do to give it justice, I have it. I got my, my 3003 45, 40, 45 aluminum. I was going to do some coupons on and show you on that. But I think I'm going to do a video next week. It's going to be a part two. And we'll do the aluminum and stuff like that since we've got the steel. I'll get this thing a little more dialed in and uh, give it a little more in-depth on it instead of just throwing a couple coupons of this, 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 and call it done. I want to, you know, I need to brush up on that aluminum. I ain't done none of that in a long time. So don't expect great dimes perfectly stacked apart with that with me because I'm more of a steel guy. I do more steel than I do anything else. But, yeah, I mean, I'm with everything I've done so far with the exhaust tubing impressed me so much. I mean, it's it's crazy. You wouldn't even have to grind on this exhaust. I mean, it it is flush. I mean, it is dead flush. All I know, undercut. I mean, you could about polish that off. And if you look in there, it's got good penetration and stuff. I mean, can't ask for no better. The pulse now. Should you use pulse all the time? Not sure on structural how uh strong it is we can do brake tests and stuff like that but i mean right now i'm going from a buck 50 down 150 amps down to 65 to 150 to 65 so it's not cold lapping like you can get when you're foot pedaling it because you can go too far off with it but i think it's pretty good i mean especially if you need something you need to keep heat out of so yeah i dig it and also i'm gonna put you a link to this down there where you guys can save some money and help the channel out too it's gonna be a 
affiliate link down in the description and all that good stuff and go check out they make a ton of stuff and if it's anything like this welder here i'm gonna say go for it super rad works for what i do make sure you go check out the link in the description below i'm gonna put a link to this machine and it'll help me out if you guys go through that and buy it i'll make a few bucks off of it, it helps the channel out and it'll help you out you need one of these machines i'm telling you for the money I know I've spent big money on machines and there's nothing wrong with that machine is still a hot rod after 20 years, but the technology that they have in these things now is just second to none. And so far she's a beast. And I think next week we're going to jump into the aluminum side of this and uh, we'll try that and you'll see how I'm not that awesome at aluminum, but Hey, if I can do it, you guys can do it and uh, make sure you go check out the merch acdesignsgarage.com scoop you up on these t-shirts help support the channel also and remember be kind to one another jesus loves you so do we god bless we gone